One of the best features about the Flutter framework is the developer community that surrounds it. There are a ton of different packages that are available on pub.dev, which can help us improve our developer experience and improve our productivity. We can develop features much faster using these packages that other people have created instead of trying to create everything by ourselves. I've used a ton of different Flutter packages, all of which have aided me in one way or another, but there are some that I come back to time and time again because they offer functionality that's so good that I have to include them in all of the projects that I create. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you 10 of the packages that I really like on pub.dev. We're going to be covering a whole bunch of cool stuff in this video. So stick around and see all of the packages because there are really awesome ones in here. The first package that I'd like to talk about is called langchain.dart, and this is the official port of the Langchain Python framework, which is an excellent framework for building LLM-based application. Langchain makes it very easy for us to build LLM-based systems that can integrate different LLM models, different data stores, and things like that to create really powerful applications. And now with the help of langchain.dart, we can do all of this by writing Dart code. So this is an excellent package for anybody trying to implement LLM-based functionality within their Flutter applications. Besides this, another one that I really like is called Flutter Gemini, which is a package that allows us to interact with the Gemini API that Google provides us. And I already have a tutorial for this on my channel, so a link to that will be down in the description below if you want to learn more about how to use Flutter Gemini. Besides Flutter Gemini, I also would like to give a shout out to the Dart OpenAI package, which basically does the same things as Flutter Gemini, but allows us to interact with the OpenAI based APIs, such as interacting with ChatGPT or the other image generation models they have and things like that. So this is another excellent package if you want to integrate functionality from the OpenAI APIs within your application. Now moving to the UI sides of thing, the first package that I really like is called Redacted. And this package basically generates a skeletonized version of the actual widget that you're going to be showing once you have the information available to you that you'd like to show to the user on the screen. So an excellent example of this is as follows. When we're loading the data, instead of showing a loading indicator or those boring spinning indicators, you can actually use the Redacted package to implement these kind of cool skeletonized based loading animations for the actual widgets when the data is being loaded for within your application and then as soon as you have the data, then you can show your own widgets. So this makes it very easy for you to create these skeletonized versions of your widgets. And this is an excellent package that I use in a lot of the different projects that I create. Besides this, I also like the Neopop package, and this basically allows us to create these very cool Neopop inspired UI elements. And one of the things that I really like about this package is the ability to create these 3D, or I don't know what the correct word for this would be, but these 3D based buttons with an effect where you can actually see the button kind of going down and up when you click on it. So I really like the Neopop button widget that the actual Neopop package provides us. And this is an other package that I use in a bunch of different Flutter projects that I create. Besides Neopop, I really like the dash chat underscore two package. And this basically provides us a highly customizable chat UI for Flutter. All we have to do is basically connect our business logic with this UI and we can change the styling for it. And it supports all sorts of different use cases, such as tagging people, showing typing indicators, showing media messages, as well as text messages. And I already have a tutorial for this on my channel as well, where I show you how to create a complete real-time chat application using Flutter and Firebase and the power of Dash Chat 2. So if you want to take a look at that, a link to that will be down in the description below as well. But this is another excellent package that I use in a bunch of different Flutter projects that I created to teach you guys awesome things that you can do in Flutter or to create my own personal projects or professional projects. Another awesome Dart package that I like is called Flutter Spin Kit. And this provides us a bunch of different widgets that we can use to show these cool loading indicators within our application. I know that it can get very boring when you have the simple own circular progress indicator spanned throughout your application. So sometimes it's nice to kind of spice things up and show these different loading indicators to your user. And Spin Kit can make it very easy for you to show these awesome loading indicators within your application. So this is another package that I highly recommend. Moving onward from this, you've all seen these applications where when you first download the app, it kind of shows you an overview and highlights the different parts of the app that helps you understand what the app actually does. 
So an easy way to do this in Dart is by using the Showcase View package. And this was a package that was recently introduced to me. And this makes it very easy to create these introductory flows within your Flutter applications to show the user how they can navigate through your application or the different features that your application has. So if you want to create some kind of an onboarding flow within your Flutter application and make it easy for users to kind of onboard into the application, then I highly recommend that you take a look at the Showcase View package because it's going to make it very easy for you to create these stunning onboarding flows for your user. And this list wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about Riverpod. Riverpod is my state management solution of choice. I use it on basically all of the projects that I create. So it's either Riverpod, provider or stateful and stateless widgets. And that's basically everything that I roll with. Sometimes I might use the getx package or get package, but Riverpod is my go-to state management solution for all of the different applications that I build. So if you want a tutorial on Riverpod, leave a comment down below, letting me know that you'd be interested in a tutorial on this. And I'll try my best to create one for you. An important note that you should remember about Riverpod is that Riverpod is basically divided up into three libraries. There's the Riverpod library, which basically implements all of the core functionality for reactive caching and data binding for the actual framework. And then there's Flutter Riverpod, which basically allows us to implement the Riverpod framework within our own Flutter applications, as well as Hooks Riverpod, which allows us to work with Riverpod in more of a Hooks manner. So if you come from the React world, um, if you want to use Hooks, to manage your state, then Hooks Riverpod is something that you should take a look at. But Riverpod is my state management solution of choice. And then finally, this list wouldn't be complete without Dio. Dio is my go-to package when it comes to networking. It's a very powerful HTTP networking package for Dart and Flutter, and it supports a bunch of useful configuration parameters that can really help you improve your developer experience. So if you want to set global configurations, if you want to set up interceptors, transformers, you want to work with form data, request cancellation, file uploading, downloading, and a whole bunch of different things like that, then Dio is the ultimate HTTP networking package for that because all you have to do is use this one package and it's going to take care of everything that you could ever imagine under the sun when it comes to HTTP networking. So with that, that pretty much concludes my list. I hope that you enjoyed and learned a thing or two about all of these different packages that you can use within Flutter to improve your developer workflow and improve the efficiency at which you can create new features within your Flutter applications. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.